In this updated tutorial in CyberLink PowerDirector, we're going to take the first of several looks at using subtitles. We'd like to answer questions like how do you use them, why should you use them, and when. We'll also get you started in putting markers for subtitles on your timeline. The first question is why should I use subtitles when I have titles? One of the big advantages of subtitles is that if you produce your project in one of four common formats, you can make it so that the user using playback software can switch the subtitles on or off, much like what you see in Hollywood productions. So if you want to give the user the option of turning the subtitles on or leaving them off, you can do that with subtitles and you cannot do that with titles. Another nice thing about that is all the subtitles reside on the same track so they're easy to see and easy to manage. That's not always the case with titles. A third positive about subtitles is that you can do several important kinds of tasks with them. I have my subtitle room opened here by I press the bottom icon, my subtitle room, or you can do that by pressing the F12 key. And you can move to any of the other segments in your upper left corner and simply press F12 or click on the icon to get there. Let me show you a couple of ways in which subtitles are commonly used. One is for description. Uh, let's assume I'm going to play this video here. It's an aerial shot of a mall that's closed down. And if I'm a, a developer and say I want to use this and describe the highlights of why my investors should be excited about this project and why our renovation of it is really going to work and I wanted to talk about the history of the place, the features, uh, the amount of money involved, uh, renters, all that kind of thing, how to get the right kind of lease, uh, we might be able to just watch the video and then add subtitles in strategic spots that would help them understand uh, this project and why they should be involved. And we'll use that for an example coming up. But it's, it's one of those kinds of things where you just want to put some data there. And subtitles are a very simple way of doing that in a uniform way. Another time we often use subtitles is when we're dealing with an audience that may not speak the language of someone who's on our video. So here I have an interview and this gal will be speaking in English and maybe someone is either a poor English speaker or a non-English speaker. I could use subtitles to either highlight elements of the dialogue or the complete dialogue and use kind of a closed caption type of setting here. So this is also good for people who have hearing impairments and we want them to see either the, the core of what's being said or every sentence if we want to. That's a more tedious way to do that, but it's very possible. And again, the advantage is if you export in the right kind of format your finished project, they can turn that on or off, which is kind of nice. And let me show you a little bit about subtitles in general. We're going to right click anywhere here because my subtitle tracks I've deliberately hidden. They always reside above your first video and audio track. And if I right click anywhere in an empty space, I can click on show subtitle track. Now whether the track is visible or not, if there are subtitles in the project and the box is checked, they still will function. So you may not see them, but if you put them in there, and this uh, box is, the enable box is checked, they will show up in your project. Let me give you a little bit about our subtitle room so we can understand some of the features. There are ways to import and export items for a subtitle. We'll deal with that in a future updated tutorial. But here I just want to show you how to place subtitle markers in your project. First thing you do is move the time indicator wherever you want the subtitle to appear. And then you click on the plus button at the bottom. That adds a marker. 
Now what many editors do is they will put in a whole bunch of markers and not necessarily put in any text. They're just looking and listening and watching and determining where to put it in and then they move to the next one. I can click on a plus. I can keep doing that over and over as much as I want. I also have a T icon here that will allow me to change the format and there's some additions in PowerDirector 17 we'll look at when we deal with that in a future tutorial. You can also change the position of the subtitle. We'll talk about that when we get some text in there. And then you have an up and down arrow that allows you to move left and right from one subtitle to another. If I want to remove a subtitle, let me add another one for fun here. If I want to remove, say, number three, I'll go backwards to number three. I think these should be left and right rather than up and down, but that's the way they are. So if I want to take out three, I just hit the minus, and then all my other subtitles are renumbered accordingly. And I can put it back there as well, and it automatically tracks the number of the subtitle. These two buttons we'll deal with in the future. Uh, one is to import, and the other is to export. Uh, so those are the descriptions. Now, if you want to change the length that the subtitle is on the screen, you can do it three ways. You can click on the subtitle itself or move the arrow to the subtitle. And then you can use the mouse. It'll turn into a two-headed arrow, and you can either make it smaller from your default length, and mine has been set for 10 seconds, or you can make it larger. And oftentimes people will put them almost next to each other. The other way you can change that is you can click on the clock in PowerDirector 17 and that will give you your duration and you can set your duration here maybe to 20 seconds and 5 frames. A third way is you can move up into the start time end time and you can change either number and when you change the number it will automatically change the length and duration of the subtitle. Let's go to 15 here. And so this is shorter and I can change the start time up here as well. If I want to be very precise. Let's see. Assume I want to start at oh, 04 seconds and it moved accordingly. So there's all kinds of ways to change these subtitle markers. Oftentimes they're, they're, you, you can use them when you're listening to someone speaking. And in this case, where I have the interview video, the easy way to do that is not simply set the markers the way we've shown you. Let me show you a different option. If you're setting subtitles, especially to dialogue, the simple thing to do is you click your play key and play the interview or the, the, the clip with the dialogue. And then you click this button here on the left and it will add a marker every time you want it to in the course of a dialogue. And there I just added four. And we'll stop it. And it automatically turns these into subtitle markers. And I can take them and move them. I can drag them and drop them. I can adjust them if I want. But if you're working with dialogue and you want to be very precise, this is only active when you're in the play mode. I don't have any dialogue here, but if I did, and I could play this, as I'm listening to the video, I can drop a marker anywhere I want, and that's a very, very nice time-saving feature. So these are the manual ways in which you can add markers into your project. And again, you notice it begins renumbering them accordingly. In the next tutorial, we'd like to look a little bit at adding the text to your subtitles and some ways in which you can modify that.